the southern shores of the great inland sea a tyrannosaurus rex taking a swim a mosasaur a giant marine lizard over twice the size of a tyrannosaur and weighing over 15 tons The island offers safety. Giant two-ton turtles are here to nest. Of 25 million square miles, far more than even the largest continent. Wherever land meets sea, rise from the deep fueling an abundance of life. It's especially rich here in the North Atlantic, where huge shoals of fish come close to the shore. Flying reptiles, pterosaurs. Here on the beaches of North Africa, there are seven different species of them. They come here to feed, to rest, and to raise their young. Tethy Draco are well adapted to spend time on the ground and not only make their nests here, but stay to protect their brood. The dagger beak of Phosphato Draco. A nine-foot-tall predator that stalks through these colonies looking for a chance to snatch an unguarded hatchling. They make their nests where they will attract less. Beneath this pile of seaweed, something is stirring. A tiny Alcyone hatchling, just a few inches high and weighing less than two ounces. Barbarodactylus, powerful predatory pterosaurs that normally catch fish, but the hatchlings are too good to miss. A long journey is coming to an end. These are Tarangosaurs, a type of huge marine reptile nearly 30 feet long. Beyond is a sheer drop-off and danger for unwary reef fish. But this Pycnodon fish has little to fear. This is Hoffman's mosasaur, the ocean's deadliest predator. But he's not here to eat. He's come to be cleaned. Tonight, even in the deep, there is light. from the abyss. A deadly hunter, Kai Kai Filu. The west of South America, 
and one of the most desolate places on this prehistoric planet. Few animals venture here, yet it is the stage for one of the most extraordinary gatherings on Earth. There are ferocious looking reptiles here too. But this little lizard is only a few inches long. A dead sauropod. A potential feast for many. Tarbosaurus, the equivalent in this desert of T-Rex. They keep everyone else away. A Velociraptor. Mononychus is a desert specialist. Like many desert animals, she must patrol a huge area if she is to find enough food. Just what she needs to open a termite's nest. In anti-ornithines, an ancient type of bird, but perhaps a little too big to tackle. It can be hard adapting to such a different and unfamiliar world. Large dinosaurs keep on the move to try to cope with these harsh conditions. These duck-billed dinosaurs are Barsboldia. But on rare occasions, there is an abundance. When rain does fall, it can seep into the land and travel great distances underground. Some dwarf everyone else. The Mongolian Titan. As here in North Africa, these canyon lands offer some desert visitors special opportunities. With a 17-foot wingspan, Barbaridactylus, a type of pterosaur, can exploit the thermals with effortless skill. These dunes are so dry that living here is almost impossible. Yet, some dinosaurs managed to do so. Cicernosaurus, a type of small hadrosaur. Such places are the home of flying reptiles. Pterosaurs. Few land living hunters venture here, but one does. A type of dinosaur, Velociraptor. And they, in turn, are prey for the most ferocious of hunters. Tyrannosaurus. 
Tyrannosaurus Rex. This old male has just brought down a Triceratops. And through the water wades one of the most bizarre of all dinosaurs. Dinochirus. It attracts one of the largest flying animals that has ever lived on planet Earth. A giant pterosaur, Quetzalcoatlus. whose ancestors lived in the sea, begin to appear. Crabs. In some places, there may be dozens per square meter. This is Mashikasaurus, a female, six feet long, and she has a mouthful of needle-sharp teeth. Just what you need to deal with awkward, multi-legged prey. Bufo, the Devil Toad. One of the largest frogs that has ever existed. At high tide, visitors come in from the open sea to explore these channels. Asmosaurs. These are true ocean-going reptiles. But some come to estuaries to explore the brackish waters. Nonetheless, great shoals of fish find plenty on which to feed in these waters. Dinosaurs, however, have managed to colonize these polar regions. In the far north of America, this tiny hunter, a dromaeosaur, has managed to survive three months of near total darkness. In this icy world, no opportunity is too small to be ignored. And here comes their first chance of the season. A herd of hadrosaurs. These duck-billed dinosaurs pass through here every year. Nomads in search of the fresh vegetation brought by the spring. Dozens of male ornithomimus are preparing for the most important moment of their year. 
These strange ostrich-like dinosaurs choose the safety of these islands to scrape out shallow craters, the first stage in making a nest. Yet that's where these enormous crested hadrosaurs are heading, to take advantage of one site in particular, one that has something special to offer. The long necks of these dinosaurs are particularly elegant and give them their name. The Loro Titan, giant swan, both above and below the surface of the water. But that very productivity brings problems for the hydrosaurs. Warm, shallow pools are an excellent breeding ground for mosquitoes. Every year, this paradise turns into a living hell. Most animals flee from the flames. But for some, the disaster creates opportunities. This six-foot-long dinosaur, a true odontid, is one of the smaller members of the theropod group. Success. The southern hemisphere has its own species of dinosaurs. These three are young Antarctopelta, small plant-eating dinosaurs. Herds of hadrosaurs are once again on the move. He is not the first to be attracted by this one. This cave glows. These are the tiny lures of fungus gnat larvae that produce light to attract their insect prey. Pachyrhinosaurs, two-ton herbivores with extravagantly armored heads. They seek refuge in the forest, stripping the last leaves from dormant trees and rooting through ferns for fallen fruit. Nanooksaurus. Plant-eating dinosaurs. These are Ostroposidon. They're 80 feet long. Triceratops, one of the biggest in North America. They can be 26 feet long. The huge frills on their heads are used for protection when they fight.
It's the work of a two-ton, 12-foot-tall Carnotaurus, a male. And amongst the most highly prized are the nuts of the ginkgo tree. A bonanza for dinosaurs called Corythoraptors. Chienchosaurus, the top predator in these Asiatic forests. This is a female, over 30 feet long. Most animals flee. But this Edmontosaurus has a family to care for. She doesn't abandon them. Beetles are among the first. They start to lay their eggs. This Atrociraptor is an opportunist. Quick to return when there's food on offer. A two-ton ankylosaur. It also finds something worth eating after a fire. Here in Central Asia, the nighttime forest is filled with strange sounds. Giant sauropods are asleep. But not everyone is asleep. For smaller creatures, it's safer to be out in the darkness than during the day. These Therizinosaurus hatched just six months ago. Bees usually build their nests beyond the reach of ground dwellers. But this one is lower than most. Delmatosaurus seldom breaks cover. And equally inconspicuous, Zalmoxes, the last of a very ancient dinosaur lineage. Zegopteryx stands 15 feet tall. Here, sauropods can meet one another, renewing family bonds. creating new ones.